All right, welcome to the Jazz Piano School podcast, episode number 222. My name is Brendan Lowe, creator and founder of Jazz Piano School. Thank you so much for being here. So in this particular episode, I'm going to be going over Blues Reharm. This is going to be the Blues Reharm part two. I'm going to be going more in depth on how to use the four Blues Reharms I talked about in the previous episode. Now, if you haven't checked that out, definitely go check out podcast 221 because I'm going to be using all those elements to go even further than I did last week and talk to you more in depth about Blues Reharms. If you're new to jazzpianoschool.com, definitely go check out all of the free education we have available. And with that being said, here we go. So with blues reharms, essentially, I talked about four different types of reharms last week. Now, I just want to cover those real quick. I talked about, number one, the tritone substitution. Right? And so that's just a 2-5-1 there. I'm just using some rootless voicings. Now, our tritone substitution is going to be substituting one dominant chord for the other dominant chord. So, for example, if I were to play an F7... I could also play a B7 in place of this. Now, how does this help the, us? It allows us to substitute and reharm, but it also allows us to provide movement within the blues. So, for example, if I play an F7 and I want to get some movement happening in my harmonies, I can move from F7 to B7 in order to approach my four chord, the, the B flat 7. So there's two ways we can really use our tritone reharm. We can use it within a progression to substitute, for example, in a 2-5-1, right? Um, at the end of the fourth, fourth measure in the blues, when usually you'll hear a 2-5-1, 2-5-1, going to our four chord, right? We can substitute the tritone in for the F7. So here's our 2-5. Now, instead of going to this dominant, we can go 2-5 to the four, right? So that's one way to use the tritone. The other way to use the tritone is like I just mentioned. If we want to add some movement, we can go one, add some movement. Now, all we're doing here is changing the sound. We're still technically on the same chord, right? So we're still technically on a chord that sounds like B7 or F7. Remember, they share the same shells. So this way, we're not really doing much. We're just changing the root and changing where the extensions and colors are. So this adds some harmonic movement. Instead of the bass just being this for four beats, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we now have this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? So we've added some walking bass motion to approach our four chord just purely with the use of the tritone substitution. That was reharm one I talked about. Reharm number two I talked about was the relative two minor. Okay, now any dominant chord, any dominant chord, all of them, they have a relative to minor sibling chord. For example, this F minor 7, it has a sibling minor chord that I can play before this F7 chord, right? And you want to think about this in terms of a 2 5 1. So if this is the 5 chord, what would the 2 chord be to this F7? It'd be a C minor 7 chord, right? So I could go C minor, F7. And then go to my B flat. And in fact, that's exactly what happens usually in a jazz blues at the end of the fourth measure, right? To get us to the four chord. Okay? Now, with the relative two minor, if you don't really know your two fives, don't worry. You can simply find the relative two minor to any dominant chord by simply going up a fifth or down a fourth. So, for example, if you have a B flat seven chord and you want to find the sibling relative two minor, you can go up a fifth and you can find the F. And we now know that F minor 7 is going to be the sibling chord to B flat. So anytime you see a B flat, you can play an F minor 7 first and then go to your B flat 7. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking that B flat, B flat 7, we're moving it over to beat 3 instead of beat 1, and replacing beat 1 with this F minor 7 for two beats and then going to our B flat 7. We're, at, we're just adding another step to get to the place that we were originally attended on going, right? So that's going to be reharm number two is the relative two minor. Reharm number three is going to be secondary dominant. Now the concept of secondary dominance here is if we have a D minor seven, that's resolving down by a fifth to G seven, right? Like they do in two five ones. Check out the bass motion from a two five one. 
D, G, C. Now, if I do that continuously going down here, check out what it looks like. D, G, C. Those are all perfect fifths, resolving down by a perfect fifth. Now, a dominant chord still wants to resolve down by a fifth. So, if I play a D, now you may be thinking, well, why does it want to do that? I'm not going to get into that now. Just take my word for it, okay? It does. Here's our D minor 7. Now, if I put a D dominant 7 here, this D dominant 7 acts in a very, very similar way to the D minor 7. So that means I can replace this minor chord with a dominant, and it still wants to go to G7. Both these chords, no matter if it's minor or dominant, still wants to go and lead to G7. Both chords are going to take us to the same place, so it doesn't matter if I play D minor here or D7. So I can actually change the harmony to a dominant chord in a 2-5-1. So instead of minor being our 2 chord, I can make this a dominant. Dominant, dominant, major. Now, why is that important? Well, in a jazz blues, if I'm comping through the remaining progression of the blues, when we have a little bit of a turnaround going into the 2 chord, usually we have this. 3, 6, 2, 5, 1, right? If I want to replace some of those minor chords with dominant chords to give me some more opportunities, some more options, I can. So remember, I played minor, dominant, minor 2, dominant. So I have two chords that I can replace. I can place this A minor 7. I can place that with a dominant. Dominant, dominant, dominant. I can replace the two chord with a dominant here and then dominant. Right? So I've changed the options. Now, why is this important? Dominant chords allow us to do so much more as you're about to see later in this podcast. I'll get into that later, okay? The last remaining reharm, four reharms, again, for the Jazz Piano School members, these are the four most important reharms you're going to want to start with, is going to be the sus reharm. Any dominant chord we can turn into a sus chord, right? This means a suspended four. So instead of this, we can play this. Four to three. Okay, this is going to create a sound like this. Right? The suspended sound is a very modern sound. It also provides us with more voice leading options, more harmonic options, more colors, more movement within the harmonies, lots and lots of different options. All right, so just to re recap again, we have four different reharms that I'm going to be digging into today. The tritone, the relative to minor, the dominant, secondary dominant, and the sus. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a uh, full screen here, essentially, so that you can see all of the music that I'm going to be talking about. All right. So for the um, video listeners and watchers right now, you can see uh, some progressions on the screen along with my keyboards as well, right? So the power of essentially our reharms right now at this point is that we can start to combine the reharms. We can start to combine them. And this is what's going to make these four reharms so powerful, right? Check it out. In the very first measure of the blues, if we simply use a tritone by itself, we can go F, tritone, to the four. This is all within the first measure. Check it out again. So one, two, three, four, one. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm using a tritone sub for the F. Now, I'm not substituting necessarily. I'm just moving to that other option. It's like a variation of the F7. Remember, B7 is just a variation of F7, so I'm simply moving to that variation. F for two beats, B7 for two beats, into the four chord. I've created movement, okay, with my reharm. Now, again, by the, the blues by itself doesn't even contain this four chord, really, on the second measure. I'm adding that in. It's like a, an, another variation of the blues, but a traditional blues would just be the one chord, right, the F7 chord. I'm adding this B flat 7 in. Okay, and again, that's slightly traditional, but now I've taken this and I've added some movement with the tritone going into the four chord. Okay, 
Now, since I've added this tritone, what I can do here is, is, is I have two other options, reharms, that I can add to this. What are they? Right? What two other reharms can I do to this tritone sub that I've now added in? I can use the sus on this, and I can use the relative two on this, right? Because it's a dominant chord. So remember, with all dominant chords, you can use the sus and you can use the relative two, right? I've already used the tritone, so that's out of the picture. But I have two others I can still apply because I've, I've now created a tritone sub here. So what I can do is I can go tritone, excuse me, one chord to the tritone, right? Let's apply the sus here. So I'm going to voice this as a sus chord now. I've now turned my tritone into a sus reharm. Right? So now instead of the three, I have the four here. Before I had the three here, right? I'm just gonna play shells now. One, three, seven, three. So I have my one chord, shells, this is traditional dominant seven. One chord, sus. You hear how that changes the, the sound? Right? And if I add some colors to that, right? I'm adding the nine in natural thirteen. Right? That's coloring up the sus. Okay, I've added my own personal colors to the sus. So I can go one, sus. I don't have to resolve to the dominant, but I could. And then I could lead into my four chord. All right, did you hear that quick resolution? Now I have to get the resolution in quick because I only have like one beat, right? One, two, three. I could, uh, yeah, I have one beat. Three, four, one. Now that doesn't sound as hip, right? Because I'm, I'm playing on the chord notes. One, two, three, four, one. I mean, it could be if you want that walking style, you could also anticipate it. One, two, three, and, right? Three, and, and then maybe pop it a little bit with some short comping. One, two. Now, all I did there to change the sound and the texture was I drop my left hand down to the low end of the piano. And this is something that students miss a lot. I just drop my left hand down to the super low end of the piano to get some richness, richness, excuse me, some lush sound, texture out of the low end of the piano. Should probably get that third in there. <laughs> right? So now I'm using the sus resolving to the tritone, which is an option, and then moving to the four chord. Let's try the other reharm that we talked about. We had two reharms available, right? We had the sus and we had the relative two minor. So what would be the relative two minor to this dominant chord? What's the sibling minor chord to B7? All right, think about it. If you guys can answer in your head, that's great. If not, so remember, if you know your two fives, two, five, one. If B7 is the five chord, the two is going to be F sharp. Our one chord in the key of E would be E. If you don't know your two fives too well, then all you have to do is go down by a perfect fourth or up by a perfect fourth, and you can find that sibling relative two. Now, as I said before, what can I do with my relative two minor? I can place the relative two minor before the dominant chord. So I can slide my dominant chord over beat-wise, rhythm-wise, right? and I can place my F sharp minor seven before it, which will lead into my B7 chord. Check it out. Here's my one chord. Okay, so I'm gonna play my one chord for two beats. One, two. Here's my F sharp minor seven. One, two, and then into the four chord. Okay, now this reharm you may hear a lot, like it's all throughout bebop. It's all throughout the bebop language. It's a very, very common reharm that once you start to hear it and understand it, you're like, oh my God, that's gonna be a relative two minor combined with the tritone. So a lot of times in a two, five, one, you'll hear this. Most people don't take it this far. G minor seven, going into your F, your, <coughs> excuse me, your G flat seven, going into your one chord, right? So that's, that's a common tritone sub, but now if we add the relative two to our tritone sub, right? I can go C sharp, G flat seven, F. So if I was soloing or comping, I'd go So I played C sharp minor 7, G flat 7 
into my F major seven. So the root motion looks like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So we get that two, five, one, right? Now in the blues, I can do the same thing. One, two, three, four. So I'm going F sharp minor seven. My voicings here, guys, I know everyone wants, everyone loves the voicings, right? I don't blame you because they sound great. <laughs> I have my one and seven here. I have my rootless voicing here. And what I'm doing to resolve this, to make it sound like a resolution without adding a B in the bass, right? This right here is resolving to this. I'm resolving these thirds. So I have, but spread out. And usually I will change to my B7 like this. But if you don't want to add that root motion, this also sounds like a resolution. You see that? So rootless voicing, my top pinky is going to resolve down by a whole step. My seven here is resolving to the third of the B7. So the seven of the F sharp seven is resolving to the third of the B7. And then into my four chord on the blues, right? I just did it again. Right, so on our two, five, one, leading into our, our four chord on measure five, usually, right, as you can see there in the music, on system two, okay, measure nine, five, six, seven, eight, eight, excuse me, we have our two, five, right? Now, this is not measure eight of the blues. This is measure eight of the worksheet that's being shown right now. This would be measure four of the blues, okay? We have a two, five. So in that two, five, we can do the same thing. We can go minor, Relative to, to our dominant, to our tritone. Now, what if we did this? Relative to, and then sus. We could go something like that. So what I'm talking about here is the power of combination, the power of combining different types of reharms to really dive deep into everything that you can do with reharms all over the place. Any single tune, any single blues, it doesn't matter. As long as you learn the reharm tools, you can apply those tools to any tune you want. All right, let's go a little bit further here. I'm just going to kind of gonna move through some of this blues stuff here. Now, the turnaround here, moving into our two chord, is going to be three, like I played before. Six, two, Five, one, six, right? Two, five, one. Now that's very, very common. That's very, very common to happen is that we have those different types of turnarounds. The three, going to the six, the minor two. Let's start to work on this section now. Let's use all three, all four, excuse me, of our reharms together. We're going to combine all of them together. And I, I, I approached this in the last lesson a little bit. So instead of this minor, we're going to turn this to a dominant. How do we do that? We're using the, the use of our secondary dominant reharm. Because this A minor 7 is still going to D7, this A7 is still going to D7, we can substitute the minor for a dominant. Now, as I, as I was saying before, the power of turning a minor into a dominant chord gives us so many more options. What can we do with a dominant chord? Well, we can add more extensions to our dominant chord. That's one door that's open to us now. With a minor chord, we only have traditionally three extensions that we can add, natural nine, natural 11, and natural 13, right? With a dominant chord, how many extensions do we have? We've added so many more colors we can add to this dominant chord now. I can play, I can play natural nine and natural 13. I can play flat nine, flat 13, right? I can play sharp nine, flat 13. Alter, right? I can play natural nine, flat 13. I can add my sharp 11. I can add my natural 13. We have a slew of different colors now just simply because we've turned that minor chord into a dominant chord. It gives us so many more coloring options. All right, now what else can we do to a dominant chord? Well, we just worked on it. We can now add our sus reharm or our relative to reharm, right? So with this A7 being a dominant chord, I can now add my relative to 
before this. So I can go E, A, D, G. Right? So I added my relative 2 to approach my A7. And then which leads us into my G minor. Right? So what that would sound like would be this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Now out of context, it doesn't sound that great. But if I'm on my 4 chord... I added a little bit of a tritone there. So, so you could go one, two, three, four, one, two. You know, there's so many different ways you could add that relative two in. Okay, that's one of the things we could do. We could also make the A7 a sus chord. And then we could resolve that. And then we'd go to our D7. We could make that a sus chord. So we could have A sus, A7. D sus, D7, right? Or we could have relative twos for that whole bar. Instead of one, two, three, four, that's A minor seven for two beats, D7 for two beats. We could add the relative two to both of those chords. The relative two of A7 would be E minor, A7, right? And then A minor seven to D7. You hear how that works? And then finally, we get to our, our two chord. That leads us into our G minor. I went E minor 7, A7, sharp 11, natural 13, flat 9. And then I went A minor 7, 11, 9, into a, a sharp 11, natural 13, natural 9. Which leads us to our two chord. So the power of adding these relative twos creates more bebop movement, not to mention I can solo over these two fives now. Right? So in that bar, but again, that's two measures each, so it'd be something like that, right? All right, let's strip back our reharms. Let's, let's approach this a different way now. So I'm still going to leave my secondary dominant over this three chord. Okay, what if we use the, tri let's use the tritone now somehow. So now that we've used the secondary dominant, let's replace this A7. Okay, let me get rid of the, the music because I'm not really using it. Um, there's not really a point to that, but. So you guys can see my voicings a little bit better. So let's, let's get rid of the A, uh, excuse me. So we're on the secondary dominant now. Let's use the tritone now. Because we've made A minor 7 into a dominant, we can now apply the tritone substitution in combination with this. So I can now make my A7 an E flat 7. Right? So my progression would start on E flat 7 and move down to D7. Now I can still use all of the same things I just explained to you. I can use sus, sus, and then into my 2 minor. So my progression would sound like this. Right? Now, in the blues, in that second system, right, we have one, we have, we're on the four chord for two measures, right? So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, one, two, three, four. Now, the third, the fourth measure, or excuse me, I should say the ninth, me eighth measure, I'm sorry, of the blues is really one bar of my A minor seven going to D seven. It's usually, that usually happens in one bar, but what if we spread it out? What if we spread that 2-5 out over two bars? This is going to give us more room to reharm. You also want to be thinking about the room you have with rhythmically, the room rhythmically you have to reharm. Because if you have only have one measure, you can't really do that much with that one measure. But let's spread it out, right? Because we're still trying to get to the 2 chord. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4. Let's go now immediately to the 3 chord. So we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. Now we're at the two chord, right? And now, since we've done that, we can start, to, we're getting really advanced here, guys. I understand. This may be way out of a lot of people's comfort zone, but that's okay. But now that we have two measures to work with, we can do so many different things, right? So I can go, I can go a measure of my E flat seven to my D seven. So now my progression would sound like this. B flat for two bars, B flat, E flat, D7, 
G. Okay, now that's pretty cool. All I did there was use a tritone in place of my A minor. Right? I made my A minor a secondary dominant and then used a tritone. Right? So but but let's apply more reharms to the tritone. So let's make the E flat seven a sus and make our D7 a sus. Right? So I can go four, four, here comes the E flat sus. E flat sus, D sus into my two chord. Okay, let's resolve the sus chords now. All I was doing was staying on the sus the whole time. Sus, sus, right? Let's resolve them now. So I'm gonna go E flat sus, dominant. D sus, resolution. Here's my suspended four. It's resolving down to the three. Here's my suspended four for the D7. It's resolving down by a half step to the three. So now it sounds like this. Four chord. Right, and then so on and so forth. Now instead of a sus, let's make, let's put a relative two minor before the E flat. So instead of e, making the E flat a sus, let's make it a relative two minor. So we're gonna go relative two minor, which is our B flat minor seven to E flat seven. Then we're going to go A minor 7 to D7. Now remember, the A minor 7 to our D7 is the standard changes for a turnaround to the blues, right? So I'm just, I'm just adding, simply adding a 2-5 that's a half step above our standard changes. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Into the 2. So it sounds like this. Here's just shells. 4 chord. 2. Now check it out. If you want to use that for soloing or improvisational purposes, you could do that. Maybe you're on your four chord. And then into your two. So I went B flat minor seven. So I'm soloing over B flat minor seven. Right, you see that? So I'm soloing over my reharm I just created. I love this. I actually have to use this more, right? Now think about it. We have a lot more time because what I'm doing right now is I'm playing two beats per chord. Right now, let's say we were playing a slow blues that was like this one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? We could add even more reharms to every beat dependent upon the tempo. Right? So let's go back a second here and let's go back to our A A7. Now, this is going to get slightly confusing. But bear with me here. Because the chord we want to get to is A7, we can play a secondary dominant that leads us to A7 before the A7. Does that make sense? So like if you see a dominant chord or a minor, you can place a dominant chord before this chord, just like we used our relative two minor to get here. So I could go E7 to A7 to D7 to G minor. So like my progression would look like this. It'd be E7, right? One, two, three, four, one, or excuse me. Uh, sorry, I'm counting, counting wrong. <clears throat> so this would be a full measure of E7. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and into the D minor, excuse me, the G minor, right? All right, so let's turn this a little bit more advanced. Since we have an E minor seven now for one full measure, we could add a relative two minor to that. We could go B minor seven, E seven. And then we could move into our previous reharm, B flat minor seven, E flat seven. We could even go further, A minor seven, D seven, right? Now we could even go even further than that. A flat minor seven, right, to D flat seven. Now, how do we get the last two five? 
the D flat is simply a tritone of G, right? So we're, we're essentially approaching that G7, right? Early, but then moving to the minor. Does that make sense? Right, so we have, essentially we have four dominant chords, three dominant chords, really. Yeah, four. E7, E flat seven, D7, and then G7, which leads us into my G minor. So we're going just down by two fives chromatically. Right, so we wouldn't have time for this in a fast blues, but a slow blues, right? So here's our progression, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And now we get to our progression. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then to our two chord, right? Just like that. And again, we could solo over this as well. And again, this is, this is, I'm talking about slow, slow blues. So if I have my, if I'm on my four chord on system two, my beast is like this, one, two, three, four. Right? So again, you have the power, depending upon the speed of the tune, to do all sorts of things. Okay, let's step back a little bit. I'm just going to do a couple more for you. Let's go into our two chord finally and, and talk about what we can do here. So let's do two sus, or sus to resolution, sus to resolution, and then into our two dominant. So I'm going to go three sus, dominant. This is the tritone of D. Okay, so I'm just using a tritone of D and I'm adding the sus into our dominant. Now, what I'm gonna do here is on our dominant chord, I'm gonna play the dominant chord for two beats, but then I'm gonna move to the tritone. So I'm gonna go G, tritone, and then into my five chord. So remember, the two chord is for four beats. One, two, three, four, one. I'm gonna create a secondary dominant. One, two, three, four, one, but I'm gonna make the tritone now. One, two, three. I'm gonna make my five chord a sus and then make it a dominant, right? And then I can move into a three, six, two, five, maybe all altered. Actually, that was not all altered, excuse me. That was all altered, right? So I'm creating more reharms as the turnaround back to the one. Okay, so here's what it sounds like from the four chord. my mic was getting in the way of my eyes <laughs> but that's essentially like do you hear much how much sound that starts creating over our blues and, and this is just the tip of the iceberg like of all the reharms that I use I mean it literally it I don't even land on the one chord sometimes when I'm going back to the top I can I can just stay on my relative two so for example like if I'm if I have my two five two five here's my turnaround three six two, five, I might just go to my relative two, right? And then from the relative two, I just go to my tritone. Because remember, this is the same thing. 
Like this is the exact same thing as having F for a full bar and B flat. All I'm doing is putting my relative two to a tritone of F7. So I'd go. I haven't even talked about the, the four minor. The power is endless here. It's endless. So to recap everything, here's what you want to do. You need to explore. You need to understand each and every component first, right? And you need to explore. I'm sorry about that. And so when you do that, that's essentially how you're going to get into all these different types of sounds. And it's not just with the blues. It's with everything. It's with all different types of sounds. But the first step is to really understand each reharm first by itself by itself right understand the power and the use and the technicality and the theory behind each tool first once you fully grasp each tool and you've you've used it you've practiced it through a theory sequence you've you've implemented it, you know you studied the tool by itself and then implemented it into tunes then you're going to have to then you want to start combining the tools together like i've just shown you in today's podcast and that will open so many doors of possibilities for reharms, comping, improv, right? This is a very key step in improv because a lot of the improv that you hear, it's not based on your right hand. It's based on a lot of stuff I was showing you, right? So if I were to play reharms over all this and solo over it, and you would hear it, right? Uh, let me, what was the reharm I played before? Oh, yeah, the B minor seven. Right, D flat, you know, whatever it is, all the reharms, uh, you would think like, what is he even playing? It's not really about the right hand. It's about the theoretical knowledge of the reharms and how they apply to the tune. Like the, the improv is always the same. It stays the same, but the harmonies and the reharms, that's what changes. And a lot of the times it's about the voicing. It's about what the pianist, the jazz pianist is doing underneath or with the harmonies. It's not necessarily about the right hand and, the, and kind of the licks or the lines that they're playing because those, for the most part, they stay pretty consistent, to be honest with you. Like not much changes there, but you add a couple of reharms here and there and then you solo with that new progression that you've just made. Trust me, you're creating whole new ball games of music, right? Just whole worlds of opportunity to express yourself in different ways. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that podcast. Definitely go to jazzpianoschool.com to check all this out. And uh, as always, have a fantastic day and happy practicing.